Now for our last video on Monte Carlo simulation, I wanna show you how we can do all of this in VBA, or at least almost all of it in VBA. So instead of building our code or our model here in the spreadsheet and actually using that, we can actually build the model in VBA as well. Again, you don't have to do it this way, but I wanna show you the capabilities that VBA has and, and kind of emphasize that you really don't have to do anything in the spreadsheet if you don't want to. Almost everything you can do, you can do in code itself. So let's actually flip over and see how we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna copy, again, our program that's working, create some space. We're gonna call this Monte Carlo, all in VBA. All right, so we're gonna build the model in here as well. That way it's basically self-sufficient. So we're gonna need a few more, extra, few more variables. So we're gonna to need to know what the random values are, right? We had the random values before that we're using the rand function in the cells. We're gonna to have to do that on our own. So let's dim rand one as a double and dim rand two as a double. So we'll need those values. We're also gonna need our sum of our role. So we'll call that the role sum as double. Actually, we can use that as an integer, so we might as well. We also need roll one as an integer and roll two as an integer. So we need a lot more variables to keep track of, and we might need some more that I'll come back and add. Uh, but we need to keep track of more things in the code because it's not be, we're not gonna necessarily rely on the spreadsheet at this point. All right, so now we can't just take our results and store them from the values. We're gonna actually have to calculate our model. So here's, we're gonna say, calculate model. So the first thing we're gonna do is, is get our random numbers. So rand one, we're gonna set equal to rnd. So just a slightly different command than what we normally have in Excel. Uh, this is where it gets a little bit different between VBA and Excel, but really the same concept applies. So rand two is also going to be rnd. So now the next challenge is how do we get the roles? And here's where we're actually gonna lean on Excel just a little bit. And what we're gonna lean on it for is actually for this CDF table. We already have these CDFs determined based on these probabilities and also on the weighting that we built in over here. So we could rebuild all of this in VBA. That's just a little bit more intense than I wanna show you guys today. So instead we're gonna use this, and in particular this table to match to, just like we used right here, we use this match function. We're just gonna use this same match function in our Excel code. So let's actually just take it right now so we can reuse it. We're gonna go over to our VBA code and we're gonna use that. So we're gonna use role one is equal to application.worksheetfunction.match. So here's where I pasted my match, my function from in the spreadsheet, but now I do have to adapt it for VBA code. The first adaptation is I'm not gonna reference cell C11. I'm gonna use rand1, the variable that I have in my VBA code. The second thing is that Excel's not gonna recognize this G3 to G8 reference. For it to be recognized, we have to use that range command that tells it to use the range in that area. So that's the way to kind of tell VBA that we're looking for a range over in our spreadsheet in cells G3 to G8. Now we've replicated that match function, we've just done it inside VBA. So we can do that exact same thing for roll two. We're just gonna change this to roll two and our random number to two as well. And then we're gonna calculate roll sum equal to roll one plus roll two. All right, so we've done most of what we need to do in the code. The last thing we need to figure out is it a win, lose, or a draw. So here we'll have to write our if statement. So we're gonna say if Roll sum equals seven. That was one of our conditions. Then let's set result two, which is our value that's storing the answer, equal to draw. All right. Else if, let's say roll sum less than seven. Then, well, if it's less than seven, that's one of the places where we lose. Now we can build another else if, if we actually have a 12, right? If a 12, that was also a lose. So let's set that. And then everything else should then fall into our else bucket. So 
So a win is going to be anything that's not a 7, not less than 7, and not a 12. So now we finally have our win. So we did this with an if statement in the Excel spreadsheet. We can do it with this if then inside of the VBA code. So now we can just take the same thing. We have now result two. Roll sum is the same as result one. So let's actually set that. Result one is equal to roll sum. And now we have result one and result two that we can just output to ourselves the same way that we've built our code for before. The one change that, again, we want to make is let's not select K9. Let's go back to our spreadsheet. And let's see that instead, let's go ahead and select N9. That way we use this second set of data. That way we kind of keep our two different sets of calculations separate. So let's flip that over to N9. And let's give it a try. So we flip back over. We go into our macros. We run all in DBA. And again, we get output that looks pretty darn similar. All right, so we've done all this code. We've done this either in VBA, we've done it in Excel with a data table, we've done it in VBA a couple different ways, so all different ways to get out lots of Monte Carlo simulations. So why the heck would we do all this stuff, right? At the end of the day, what we started with was a problem where the casino, if you remember from this tab, was actually making out pretty well, right? On average, the casino was winning about 13 cents every time we played this game. And as we updated it, well, 13 was actually really bad. The average tends to be closer to like six cents. So as we update the values, I'm just hitting F9 over and over again, we see what we tend to lose. So what we could do is we could actually add a tilt to the die. Say you can sneak into the casino and bring your own die in. Well, at that point, how would you want them weighted to make it a fair game? Keep in mind, you're not trying to cheat to make money here. You're just trying to make the game fair, right? So let's go ahead and see what we could do to make that happen. So first we want to think, well, it's probably better to put weight on four and five since those make things bigger. Six is probably good too because it makes it bigger, but it might not be the greatest because the more likely six becomes, the more likely a 12 is and we lose on 12. So let's just experiment by putting some weight on three, four, and five. And let's say we put an extra 5% probability on each of those. So now ones and twos aren't very likely, sixes are less likely, but threes, fours, and fives are going to happen a lot. So if we rerun our data table now, now we see on average we make 12 cents if we pay a thousand times. Now as we refresh it, we see we're making a lot of money now. Now we went a little too far. We're not being that fair to the casino at this point. We can change our analysis now. Let's change the weighting to maybe two cents. All right. Now we can run it and see, oh, there's a negative, there's a positive, another positive, a little bit negative. Now it's bouncing around on either side of zero. So it seems like we've got a more fair game design now. And the idea is that if you use Monte Carlo simulation, in particular with lots and lots of trials, way more than a thousand to get more precise estimates, we could actually calculate the exact fair tilting to make this game fair. And that's what we really can do with Monte Carlo analysis. And it's you know not just gonna be applied to dice game, but we can start thinking about it with portfolio returns. If you're planning for retirement, we can use Monte Carlo analysis to look at what possible outcomes look like for your current retirement savings plan. You know, you can ask the question, what's the probability that I retire with enough money to spend $10,000 a month? Or what's the probability that by age 50, I have a million dollars in my retirement accounts? Those are questions we can answer with Monte Carlo analysis.